Elon Musk is playing you. I saw the announcement that crashed the crypto market, the whole crypto market, 7% the other day. Elon Musk, here, here's a few fun facts. Tesla almost went bankrupt before the pandemic. Elon Musk has suffered nervous breakdowns. Google it, check it out. And even though in the announcement they said that they were not going to sell their Bitcoin to keep the price kind of high, do not be surprised or shocked if Tesla unloads his Bitcoin in the future. <clears throat> it would be considered a classic pump and dump. Elon Musk is playing you. Elon Musk is playing you and essentially because Elon Musk has done a lot of extremely awesome stuff, Pay PayPal. I mean, how many people start and found not one, not two, but three billion dollar companies? It's very, very rare. So the kudos to Elon for doing all that. However, um, you're being set up for the okie doke. And this is why. How many people are using Bitcoin for transactions? Zero. No one's using Bitcoin for transactions. This is messaging 101. Elon like, hey, we're going to buy Bitcoin and we're going to take Bitcoin for payments. Right? Um, that is crazy, right? We're going to take some Bitcoin for payments. We're going to do these things, right? We're going to buy Bitcoin. You could be, be set up for the classic pump and dump. I suspect this is what's going to happen. This video will serve as a record as a prediction before it happens. Because Elon Musk is playing with folks. Because, like I said, no one is using Bitcoin to do any transactions. No one. So, it is kind of like from the art of war, the banishing of your sword over here while you're doing something else with your other hand. Elon Musk is playing you. And because he's fantastically rich, people don't care. It doesn't matter that this man has had a mental breakdown. It doesn't matter that Tesla almost went bankrupt before the pandemic. No, 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 no. It don't matter. Don't matter. So I've had some people we're talking about, I talk about, I talk about Bitcoin, I talk about the Ethereum. Because essentially, they just said they weren't going to take Bitcoin as payment, right? And the whole market went down. One man, one company, one announcement. And the whole market went down. This is what I keep talking about. It's kind of like what's happening with Colonial Pipeline. Um, Colonial Pipeline pro provides 40% of the gas for the East Coast. And when it went down, everyone in the East Coast is suffering. Um, I feel that most of the gas stations around here are empty now. I have access to five vehicles and all five of them are full. So I could roll around for a few weeks. I'm good. However, this is what happens when you have the consolidation of power. If something happens to that power base, the ramifications are huge. They're huge. I know someone that works at Colonial Pipeline and they're working like over, they, she's working like 24 hours. 
they're trying to get this pipeline back up because they're losing billions a day. Billions a day for it being down. So they're trying to get this bad boy back up a ASAP. So, you know, I, I got a lot of people who um, talk about, like, in 2017, go back if you want to go to the front of the page and go to my Bitcoin predictions, which were 100% spot on in 2017. Now, why, are, why, why can't I pinpoint my cryptocurrency predictions today like I did in 2017? Because the marketplace is bizarre. Remember my video, Fundamentals Don't Matter? Uh, I was making my predictions based off fundamentals. And at 2017, fundamentals very much matter. Fundamentals were very much in play. Right now, fundamentals are not in play. We're in a hype cycle where essentially, if you catch the right hype cycle, you can make some money. Fundamentals don't matter. You don't have to work hard. You don't have to show up. And I, someone comment like only talk about I talk about all cryptocurrency because with the case of this announcement of Elon Musk, the whole market went down. See, here's the thing. Virtually everything is tied to Bitcoin. If Bitcoin goes down, the whole market crashes. The whole market. Dogecoin, 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 whatever the hell it is, it went down too. See. We're in this hype cycle that isn't based upon fundamentals. And typically, my economic analysis is based upon fundamentals. Fundamentals don't apply right now. So it's very hard to make accurate predictions when you're dealing with a hype cycle. Because you never know what direction the hype cycle is going to go on. Like in February, when Elon Musk, like, we're buying this Bitcoin, uh, we're going to accept Bitcoin. February, let's see, March, April. <laughs> that lasted for like two months. It lasted two months, almost three months, and it's over. That was that hype cycle. But rest assured, I, I'm almost certain, I can't say when, but I feel that Tesla's gonna unload that Bitcoin at some point in the future. And it's going to crash the market. This is why <clears throat> he was like, we're not selling our Bitcoin because it would have went lower. And I believe there's a strategy in place, there's timing in place, and at some point, Tesla is going to unload this Bitcoin. I'm almost guaranteed they're going to do that because Elon Musk, the CEO who was smoking weed on the Joe Rogan show, he has a history of doing whatever he wants to do whenever the mood strikes him. And this isn't going to bode well. But let's get into the hype cycle. Let's talk about how to make money with the hype cycle, because like there are a lot of you up in the comments because you've made some money with cryptocurrency. You feel that you're financial geniuses. OK, let's say for the record, you are a financial genius. You turned a hundred dollars into a hundred thousand dollars using crypto. Now, here's the danger for you. The longer that this goes on, the more unfit you will be able to make money any other way. That is the danger. And you don't even realize it. You don't even have a clue to what's coming because, like I said, I've been watching Bitcoin and Bitcoin is, is, is kind of in a similar orbit that it was in 2017 because it didn't, Bitcoin did not crash all at once in 2017. It went up and it went down. It went up and it went down. And it went up and it went down. And it went up and it went down. And end of the year, it tanked. 
Bitcoin is in that kind of similar pattern right now. And if Elon Musk was to come out and say Tesla selling Bitcoin and sell it, Bitcoin would probably drop to 10K or 6K overnight. Now, here's my argument with that. Why would you invest money in something that one person can move the market? One person. One person can move the market. That ain't really safe. That ain't really safe. So right now, I'm not going to make any, by this date, like in 2017, I was hitting it out the ballpark because fundamentals applied. Fundamentals in the, uh, of the marketplace were in effect. It's not happening right now. Um, so it's really kind of hard to make accurate predictions based on a hype cycle. Like how many of you who bought Bitcoin, and I know there's many of you who watch these videos, who bought it, when Elon Musk bought it and it, it pumped, Bitcoin pumped 36K, went from 20K to 50 something K. So if you bought Bitcoin at 20 and you're holding, you're still $30,000 to the good. I would suggest that you sell half of your Bitcoin and take profits now. Because you sell half, you realize a $30,000 gain to the good. And if, the, if it goes up again, you still have half. But I, I would be really risky. Like, let's go ahead and go way, way, way back in the past. And let's say I had a crystal ball and I knew this was going to happen. And I bought $10,000. Bitcoins. I would have sold 10% in 2017. Remember, I got a crystal ball. I knew this was going to happen. And I would have held on to 90% until now. And then I would have sold probably 40% now. That's what I would have did. And essentially, if you're going to invest in this stuff, you got to take profits because it is so volatile. Like, I'm going to, you, you know, right now, the crypto marketing department, they're coming on YouTube videos with sheer veracity. Um, essentially, if you don't take profits, a year from now, you, you may be kicking yourself. Take the money while you can. Because if you don't, like, like I said, Elon Musk, He's playing you. He's playing you like a violin and he is a concert violinist. He's playing you because essentially, what is Elon Musk? The head of a corporation. What do corporations do? They do what's in their best interest. And when it comes a point for Bitcoin to be sold by Tesla, that's what they're going to do. Regardless of the ramifications, because uh, big Tesla buying that much Bitcoin lifted the markets $35,000 per coin. Guess what's going to happen if they sell? It's going to crash forty dollars to $50,000 per coin. And they're probably going to sell in the future. I'm, uh, I don't know when. Don't know when, I don't know what the plan is, I don't know what the agenda is, but based upon my economic analysis, Bitcoin, uh, Elon Musk was under a lot of stress, 2017, 2019, a lot of stress. And he actually admitted that they were about to go bankrupt. They were a month away from bankruptcy. And there's some other analysis that feel that uh, Tesla Tesla, Tesla just made a profit. Tesla's like 17, 18 years old. They just made a profit last two years. So there was enormous um, financial pressure upon Elon Musk, 
of to perform, to make Tesla a winning story. And it is amazing how I come here on YouTube and I talk about the storage auction business. And I get vetted. I, I literally have people calling up here to ask people if I was actually out on the storage auction trail. But someone like Elon Musk, y'all vet him. Y'all don't know the man had the nervous breakdown. Y'all don't know that Tesla almost went bankrupt. Elon Musk bought some Bitcoin and people went crazy. They went crazy. How can you doubt Elon? Let's say Tesla went bankrupt. If Tesla went bankrupt, none of this would have happened because he wouldn't have had the money. He wouldn't have had the money to buy the Bitcoin. It'd been a different story. Uh, Bitcoin wouldn't have pumped thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars. Bitcoin would probably be twenty-eight eighteen thousand dollars right now. So, these events are important, and they need to be looked upon through the right lens. Because once again. Here's my thesis. If you're in income danger zone number one, which is less than $50,000 single person income, you would be better off starting a side hustle, side business and making cash money than investing in Bitcoin or the stock market. Now, with that said, I am aware that we're in a hype cycle where fundamentals don't matter, don't matter. So during this hype cycle, you can deploy some money into something and make some money. In some cases, a lot of money. Now, how long is this hype cycle gonna go on? This hype cycle is not gonna go on for 20 years. I guarantee you that. Um, at some point, something's got to give and i feel the first thing that's going to give is we are going to have people by december who have not paid their mortgages for a year or more that's going to become a big problem in the future uh, i feel that the hype cycle will definitely continue for 2021 uh, we're going to probably see another stimulus package. Um, but 2022, I think the hype cycle is going to start to deflate because, all right, you got these mortgages. Like, this is how mortgages work. They lend them, they do a mortgage for you, right? And then the company that does the mortgages bundles up all of the mortgages and they sell these mortgages to on the marketplace and whoever buys these mortgages is expecting a return pandemic hits cool i'm cool i can wait i can chill but these people have invested billions and i'm like i want you to think about it. you were someone that invested billions of dollars and this pandemic happened and in the beginning, you were very understanding. You was like, hey, you know, we got to give people a break. We got to look out for the people. And then when that slips into two years where your billion dollars ain't making no money. At that point, you're going to get cranky. At that point, you're going to be like, hey, we need to do something. We need to turn the money machine back on. And I feel in 2022, 2020, I don't really know which year because another factor is we have the Democrats in the office. And this is one of the reasons I'm almost certain we're gonna have another stimulus package before Christmas. Um, that could pro prolong the hype cycle. That could prolong the hype cycle. We could be in this hype cycle for two years. Um, and in the hype cycle, anything can happen because fundamentals don't matter. And they're in this hype cycle. So, and this has happened before in America, 
But with every hype cycle, there comes a depression cycle. And the depression cycle usually comes after the hype cycle because the hype cycle has pushed prices up so high that when economic marketplace indicators and forces get come back into play, the, the, the crash to reality usually ain't pretty. Right now, I feel that you can buy a house and overpay for the house and be good for about two years because that's kind of where I'm seeing this going. Uh, I don't know, but that's kind of where I see it's going. We're going to be in this hype cycle for the next two years. Uh, fundamental marketplace analysis is not going to be really impactful. Now, I, I will be checking in with y'all and letting y'all know because I found it very interesting that Elon Musk is playing y'all. And this is the game. Elon Musk buying one point, I think 1.5 billion Bitcoin. He instantly became a whale. And these are whale games. Buy it cheap, pump it up, then dump it. And if there is a way for uh, Tesla to dump their Bitcoin and no one know they'll do it. I think that would have already happened if they could have got away with it. But um, typically in the Bitcoin community, when huge moves like that are made, it's on the public ledger. And then, you know, people can pretty much predict with a great deal of accuracy who made that move. So we will see. Also, let's talk about that. Since we're having this conversation, you and I, if another whale who's sitting on a billion of crypto liquidated, same thing would happen. If two whales liquidated at the same time, y'all remember, there's this, this YouTube channel called Crypto Weather. Trayvon, I forget his last name. And when crypto in 2017, he was hilarious because he used to do these crypto weather reports and then he would look at his charts and he would like run around screaming like, ah! that will be if two whales liquidate, you will see crypto Armageddon. You will see Bitcoin drop so quick, it will make your head spin. And for the people who bought Bitcoin early, like, you know, 2010, 11, 12, they'll be fine. They'll be fine because they'll still sell and make money because they didn't invest that much money. But for you fools who bought at 20 and 30 and 40,000, you're going to see an, an, an erosion of your capital. And it ain't going to be pretty. It ain't going to be pretty. But I find it interesting. I find it funny that Elon Musk is playing y'all and y'all don't even realize it. Because here's the thing, and th this is one thing that Elon, Elon Musk, when he said that Tesla was accepting Bitcoin and they bought Bitcoin, it's what he didn't say that's important. He did not say that Tesla was gonna hold on to Bitcoin forever. He never made that proclamation ever. He never said that, he just bought it and did what he did. And he didn't say like two months later, Tesla would suspend accepting. When, when, when he made that announcement, I was like, come on, bruh. No one is spending Bitcoin right now. No one is using it as currency. But the art of war, banishing of the swords, got y'all all gassed up. Woo, Elon bought Bitcoin. Woo, Tesla, Tesla is holding Bitcoin. Tesla is accepting Bitcoin as payment. Woo, 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 woo. And just like they said, we're not taking payments anymore, even though I would be seriously shocked to see how many people bought a Tesla with Bitcoin. I would be shocked because people are not spending it. Um, when, when they sell, it's gonna be ugly. It's gonna be ugly. And like right now, if you're in the cryptocurrency and you during this hype cycle, you got lucky. I'm going to continue to say that 
to buy something during a hype cycle or to buy stock during a bull market, that does not make you a financial genius. I want to see you make money when times are bad. That's the sign of financial geniuses. When you can make money when times are bad. Like I did. I made my first million, first million dollar a year during the recession. That's documented. Let's hear the document on this YouTube channel. I made money when times were not that good. Let's see you perform then. Like right now, Tesla stock pump has made a lot of people money. A lot of money. So, it is um, really interesting how everyone is like, you know, doing Tesla, uh, buying Tesla stock. Now, buying Apple stock is a good play. Apple is a very profitable company sitting on two bit, 200 billy cash, probably more by now. <clears throat> so Apple's a solid play. And you know, Apple just went down because of the whole market went down. Apple did not go down because of marketplace fundamentals. But yeah, it's going to be cray cray. And you can go out and, you know, and someone's like, Glenda, just buy one Doge crown. You know what you sound like? You sound like a drug dealer. Just take a hit. Just take a hit. The cracky crack. Just take a hit of the crack. It's going to make you feel so good. I, I'm not going to buy Dogecoin. I'm not going to invest in any cryptocurrency. And I'm going to tell you why. I have ways of making money that I don't need them. I'm going to be honest. If I was desperate, as some of y'all are, probably be up in the crypto markets. Probably would, but I'm not desperate. Uh, like right now, I'm in a holding pattern. I'm waiting to get these car titles so I can liquidate these cars. Um, I got money coming in while I'm sitting here on this treadmill talking to you. I got money coming in. I got money when I'm in there sleeping. I got money when I'm giving my girl the D. I'm getting money when I'm giving my girl the D. So I make money passively 24-7, 365 days a year. I get payments when I'm asleep. So I don't have to buy cryptocurrency. And I know a lot of y'all want to jump me in your crypto game and you want me to start speaking positively on crypto. But once again, um, we're in a hype cycle. We're in an alternate universe. And I understand economic principles and foundational principles. So with that, I'm not going to be buying. I'm not desperate, man. You know, last night, you know what I had for dinner last night? I had a filet mignon at Hal's, H-A-L apostrophe S. My dinner was 110 bucks, 100 and, $104 and $124 with the tip. That is my, I can do that every night if I wanted to. And here's some funny. We're going to segue. I like to eat really nice. And um, you, you guys know I'm doing uh, intermittent. I'm doing alternate day fasting mixed up with intermittent fasting, right? And one of the things that I do is I weigh myself every day. And when I go to a place like Waffle House or Burger King, I will gain four to five pounds of water weight because of all the sodium in that food. But if I go to Hal's or the Atlanta fish market or some of these high end expensive restaurants, the next day when I weigh myself, I don't gain no weight. I don't gain no water weight. So what I'm telling you is, yes, the food is expensive, but the food is better. 
I actually experience no weight gain when I go to Hal's, the Atlanta fish market, or one of these other high-end restaurants because the quality of food is so much better. And I'm going somewhere with this. I can eat at Hal's every day if I wanted to. I could take some with me every day if I wanted to. So um, me and my girl, we went, we, we, we ate appetizers. I think that bill was like 360, right? And um, I think when we go to the Atlanta fish market, those bills are about two something. Because we get, we, we get the drinks, we get the appetizer, we get um, the entree, and we get dessert. And I can eat like that at Hal's, I can eat like that at the Atlanta fish market, and I will not gain a pound. What I'm trying to tell you guys is frugal living is for poor people. If you got yourself some money, you need to live well. You need to eat well. You need to enjoy that money because I, I had no clue. Like essentially, um, one of the things I do is I don't really, every now and then I'll go to Waffle House because I like, I like the, the high, the, what is the, what is that? The all-star, I like the all-star. But what I'm finding is it is better for me to spend that bread and eat that healthier grade of food because it's better for my health. Because it, it doesn't have the sodium, it doesn't have the preservatives, it doesn't have all this junk in it. And I, like I said, on my days that I'll eat somewhere like, um, fun fact, every now and then I'll go to Popeye's and get that shrimp and chicken tender combo. That meal will put five or six pounds of water weight on me. Five or six pounds. And one of the things that I'm doing it less and less because I don't think these big swings are healthy. But I can eat a high tone meal and because essentially what happens is when you're doing alternate day fasting, it puts your body in a uh, state of starvation. So when you eat, it soaks up all that food and stuff. But when you eat better food, cleaner food, you don't get the water weight gain because um, yesterday I weighed, and yesterday was a, a fasting day, I weighed 251. This morning I woke up, I weighed 251.3. So essentially, this is another reason you want to get some money. You don't want to get some money to stunt or flex. You want to get money so you can have the best options to live your life in the best manner. Because I'm telling you, uh, I'm going to put a picture of it in the community page. Um, fine dining is where it is. Fine dining is where it is. And also, I met this interesting woman because I, you know, typically when I go by myself, I don't get a booth. I'll sit at the bar. And there was this woman, her name is, her, her name is Paula. Uh, we were just having the most interesting conversation. Come to find out, Paula's the CEO of a company. That's the kind of folks you run into when you're doing this kind of dining. This is the kind of folks you run into. And we had a very nice conversation, and I was talking about what I did, and she's like, look, yeah, we're really going to make a move to do more internet marketing. So Paula and I will be having conversations about that. I met that, that's gonna put some money in my pocket. That's gonna put some money in my pocket. So this is one of the reasons when I was flying, and this is one of the reasons I got vaccinated. I'm about to start traveling again. I'm about to start um, doing more with the car business, which is kind of like, I'm just in a holding mode. I'm kind of waiting to get these titles so I can sell this so I can have a cleaner presentation of building that business. Cause I'm sitting on 70, 85, 86. I'm sitting on about hundred thousand dollars worth of cars. I'm going to liquidate cause I can sell four. I can sell six without a dealer and essentially I can go ahead and push 
seven if I wanted to. So I'm gonna sell six cars real quick. Get that money out of them and then go buy. Um, I'm gonna be able to turn those six cars into 14 or 15 cars. Because here's the thing, the rental rate is gonna be roughly the same. Because with hire car, you can only rent between 20 something and $70. They don't let you uh, do more than $70. So, and I did not put, because I tried to put the Land Rover on there and they wouldn't take it for some reason. I don't know why. And I'm just like, eh, I'm gonna let that bad boy sit and I'm gonna sell it. Because either I can sell it or I can trade it in at a dealership for two cars. And that's probably what I'm gonna do, whatever. Cause see, once I, cause I trade it in, that still gives me two cars I can sell. So I'm probably gonna trade it in to get me two cars real quick. And the dealership will probably take that car to auction. Um, but yeah, Elon Musk is playing y'all. Playing y'all like boom, 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 boom plucking those guitar strings and this is what's so funny uh, people will investigate me but they won't investigate an Elon Musk because I got a question if you had an uncle that you knew who almost went bankrupt you personally knew this and you knew your uncle had a mental breakdown and you knew your uncle smoked weed would you listen to his advice on anything you personally know that he had a mental breakdown you personally know his company almost went bankrupt and you personally know that he smokes weed and he's trying to give you some business advice are you gonna listen to him no you wouldn't you're like ah unk, you've done all this crazy stuff thank you but no Elon Musk where do I sign up where do I sign up it's funny. It is funny. Now, once again, I will make this prediction. I feel that Bitcoin is in what's called a low degrade orbit. It's not going to like do a sudden crash. Like if Tesla was to sell all this Bitcoin, you would see a, a big dive overnight, literally a big dive. But what I predict is it's gonna do what it did in 2017. It's gonna go up, it's gonna go down, it's gonna go up, it's gonna go down, it's gonna go up, it's gonna go down, and it's gonna go down, it's gonna go down, and it's gonna be a little bit that it's not gonna be shocking, and it's not gonna have people um, losing their minds. But I feel that eventually it's gonna crash. Now, if another whale liquidates, it's gonna crash hard. If two whales liquidate, you will see financial devastation across the crypto market. Two people. I, I don't have no confidence in a market that one or two people can crash. And that's the thing that gets me with y'all. But then again, I am not desperate. I am not thirsty. Um, I'm in the position where I got like $100,000 invested in cars and I could just chill and wait until I get those titles and then liquidate those cars then. You wanna know why? Because I have income coming in every month. My YouTube income is enough to support me. My YouTube income would pay all my bills. So I have multiple streams of income and this is why I'm not desperate or thirsty. And I saw a comment, and let's, let's have this conversation. I saw this comment where like the CEO makes all this money for doing nothing. Are you a CEO? You know how hard it is to become a CEO? And here's the thing, you're paid on how easy it is to replace you. So if you're doing something that doesn't require a great deal of skill, such as a doctor, an attorney, an engineer, software programmer, replacing you is super easy, except 
during this hype cycle where people are getting government money and many low wage workers would rather sit at home and get an unemployment than to go to work. This is what I mean, fundamentals don't matter because typically people would be begging for jobs. This isn't going on in this hype cycle. So you, you feel that you're paid what you're worth. Um, let's go ahead and be bluntly honest. If the only thing you can find is a $10 an hour job, that's who you are. You are a $10 hour dude. Like I did this as a fun exercise. I took all of my skill sets, video creation, internet marketing, course creation, and for a company to hire me with all of my skill sets, 500K a year. That's the minimum salary for someone like me with everything that I know how to do. 500K. And especially because I know how to do the internet marketing and uh, I'm not running ads right now because essentially YouTube, I make all my money from YouTube, but with my skill sets in the marketplace, and I have not, I've, I've not had a job since in 22 years. I've not had a job in 22 years. So I don't even know how to put that together or present that to put that out there or even talk to headhunters because I have no need. Like, I'm about to tell y'all something. And for those of you who are fans, y'all gonna love this. Those of you who are haters, you're gonna hate harder. The way that I have my business set up, I could take the rest of the year off and still make money. I would still get paid from YouTube. I would still get paid for my business. I could literally take the next six months off and I would still get paid a check every month doing absolutely nothing. And if I wanted to extend that to a few years, I could get away with that. And my lifestyle would not change. You wanna know why my lifestyle won't change? Cause I pay cash. I have no car notes. I don't have no bills. I do have that EDIL loan that I'm gonna have to start paying on next year. I think the payment on that bad boy is like 600 bucks a month or something like that. I'm gonna have to start paying on that. Um, but yeah, other than that, it essentially, how did I get here? Hard work, not trying to cheat the system, not trying to hack the system, not trying to, you know, because I saw this one comment like, bro, if you're worth that much, someone would be paying you. If there's no one lined up at your door like, hey, come work for us, and they throwing money at you, you're not worth it. I know in your mind, you may feel that I'm a CEO, man. Yeah. Living in the ghetto, driving a car with hubcaps. You know, fun fact, I hate cars with hubcaps. And essentially, uh, I'm not buying a car with hubcaps for my business. If it has hubcaps, I'm not going to buy it. If I actually get it really cheaply, I'm probably going to replace the, rim, the hubcaps with rims. I just hate cars with hubcaps. It's just, I mean, so many bad things happen. They fly off, they get damaged, they look, they be looking horrible. Um, if I bought a car with hubcaps, I would probably take the hubcaps off and paint the rims black. That's probably what I do. I hate them. I absolutely hate hubcaps. And you know what's funny? Back in the day, I had a friend who had a business selling hubcaps. He made a lot of money selling hubcaps. And now I think most of the cars they make, they don't even come with hubcaps. The majority of the cars they make, they come with uh, some kind of rim, which is a better option in my opinion. But yeah, Elon Musk is playing y'all. But once again, during this hype cycle, Fundamentals don't matter. And that's why it's very hard for me to make 
spot on predictions like I was doing in 2017, 2018. Now I did make some spot on predictions about paying people this money. I did know what was gonna happen with that. Human nature, human nature hasn't changed in 3000 years. And in this hype cycle, you're gonna see a lot of more, some more crazy stuff. You're gonna see some more crazy stuff and the crypto marketing department is gonna push forward some more ads to you. But I'm waiting, I'm waiting for one of these whales to liquidate, to show y'all what I'm talking about. Because now he here's the thing, most of the whales are already rich. So they don't really have to liquidate to live well. So they can be very, very patient. But at some point, someone's gonna take their gains and they're gonna, they're gonna crash the market. Um, it's gonna happen because of human nature. Like, all right, I got all this crypto. If I sold this crypto, I could become a billionaire. Yeah, I'm about to sell it. And before I sell it, I'm gonna move to Puerto Rico. All right, here's the thing with Puerto Rico. I think Jake, and Jake Logan or Paul Logan, whoever their names are, moving to Puerto Rico. I have known this about Puerto Rico for years. Yes, you can move, live in Puerto Rico and get around paying taxes, right? However, if you live in Puerto Rico, the import tax is ridiculous. If you buy a Ferrari, right? $350,000 car. Guess what your income import tax is going to be? $350,000. So you're going to pay $700,000 for that car. If you, now, one of the ways around that is what you need to do is have an address in Puerto Rico and have an address in Florida. And then you fly up to Florida, you buy your Ferrari, and you have that car registered to your Florida address. And then you just transport that car to Puerto Rico. Save you $350,000. Because doing that, you're just gonna pay sales tax on it and all that. And you're just gonna pay like a transport fee of probably 1,500. That's how I would do that. Because you move to Puerto Rico and you don't have a plan, you're gonna be shocked at how much stuff costs. Because it's all, everything's important. Everything's important. So, yeah, it, you know, we're gonna be talking about some other stuff because the games that the wealthy play are totally different than the games that you play. And one of the things that you guys have got to understand and accept is if you're sitting now thinking, how can I turn a thousand dollars into a hundred K? That's the wrong way to look at it. You should be thinking, how can I increase my skill sets to make a hundred K? That's what you should be doing. And a lot of you folks, who sent me receipts with crypto uh, y'all didn't really send me no real receipts you just sent me screenshots and stuff um, it's kind of funny it's kind of funny today I think I'm gonna start testing my ads and here check this out uh, for the car business I'm gonna run an ad because I'm not in a position to sell any cars uh, when I'm able to turn these six cars into 14 cars I'll be able to like fulfill that because essentially, check this out. I was doing some, crunching some numbers. Like if I get my own insurance, which is gonna be $120 per month per car. Because with hire car, I charge $35 per month. That's $935 per day over 30 days. That's over a thousand bucks but because I have to pay higher car 25%, I'm gonna get seven something. Where if I have my own insurance and I rent the car out, let's say I rent out the car for 250 a week. And essentially, cause this is what I'm thinking about doing it. Like you can rent this car for 250 a week and at a certain point, I will sell it to you. And what I will do is go to Kelly Blue Book and crunch the value of that car 
once we're ready to sell it to you and sell it to you at that price plus a little interest. So you will not pay for the depreciation that you put on the car twice. Because I had someone ask me about that. Uh, I think this guy's gonna buy this Camry because he, he's got it, he's gonna keep it. Um, so I, I really feel, because essentially if I'm able to set up that model, I would, let's say the car makes, I don't have my calculator, but 30 times 30 is 900, 30 times five is 105, it's like 150, so 1,050, right? And then I have to give 25% of that to hire a car. If I'm able to do my plan, I would realize an additional, maybe $200 per car per month. Over the, the inventory that I'm planning on stacking up, that's very significant. That is very, very significant. Over 20 cars, that's $2,000 a month. Over 40 cars, that's $4,000 a month. Over 60 cars, that's $6,000 a month. Or $72,000 a year. That is huge. That is huge. And this is one of the reasons that I'm gonna get my own insurance because I thought about it, I gotta set it up. Because like I said, right now I'm kind of in this holding pattern until I get the titles so I can liquidate these bad boys. And because um, essentially the Land Rover and the Porsche repairs have turned me off because essentially with these older luxury vehicles, that's going to be a norm. I mean, I've had these cars. The Range Rover, I had the car a week. It broke down. The Porsche, two weeks, it broke down. And I'm just sitting there like, now these Acuras, I've not had a problem. I got one I got to do an oil change on. I got to do that. Also, another reason I'm in the holding pattern, we've got this gas crisis that's going on right now. So I'm not going to be out um, getting vehicles and stuff while this is going on. And I feel for the Uber drivers because if they don't get restore these pipelines and get things up really quickly, you got Uber drivers who are going to lose money, Uber Eats people who are going to lose money. Um, unless you got an electric car, you're kind of screwed. And so I'm going to be checking that out. And probably, I filled up the Porsche the other day. It's full. I actually found a gas station yesterday that had gas, so the X5 is full. And... Um, I'm probably going to go get the Land Rover and drive that around because it has a full tank of gas. And I'm not going to rent that because I'm just waiting to sell that bad boy. So, or if I can get, well, essentially, I don't want to take that money because I know I could do the buy here, pay here thing with the inventory I have right now. And let's say I took $2,000 down like the Range Rovers, I have to take five, but eh, I'm just going to liquidate and start over because essentially I want my books to be correct. And this this is kind of like I'm making money with the cars on hire car. Um, I made fifteen hundred bucks on hire car so far this month, probably do three. And that group of cars I paid. Twelve, eleven, and eight. So I paid twelve thousand, eleven thousand. That's twenty-two. I paid thirty thousand dollars for those cars that are rented out, and they're going to make roughly three thousand dollars this month. So I'm going to get a ten percent return on my money this month from that collection of cars. So you know, once I start spending again. You know, I, I'm still in the red because I haven't gotten my $3,000 back. Only once I get my $3,000 back will I then begin to be, be in the black with those vehicles. But it's pretty good start, like a 10% return on money invested. And pretty much 
Uh, I'm thinking about doing something a little wild and crazy. I'll talk about that later. But yeah, Elon Musk is playing with y'all and y'all don't even know it. So if you, I'm getting ready to do something a little different. Um, I'm thinking about creating what's called the Millionaire Lab. And we're gonna be focusing on how for you can start a business and become a millionaire in three to five years. And we're going to be talking about that process. And it's going to, you got to start a business. You're not going to be an investor, not even with Bitcoin. Because essentially, if you had, you would have had to have 10 Bitcoins and they went up 20 Bitcoins. You would have had to have 30 whole Bitcoins to get, become a millionaire during the last run. And the majority of people don't even have one. They don't even have a whole Bitcoin. Most people have a fraction of a Bitcoin. So links below, we'll be talking about that. I'll be sending out some emails, be getting active, and let you guys know what's going on. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.